Welcome to Church Online, recorded on Ghana land. It's great to have you with us. My name is Lynn. I'm the minister at Adelaide West, and I'll be sharing with you today. Each week we light a candle. It's a reminder of the presence of Jesus. The presence of Jesus as we meet in this way, as well as in our everyday lives. God is with us. I've just returned from two weeks holidays, a week on the Sunshine Coast where it was warm and sunny and four days in beautiful robe were not so warm and sunny. It was a time of refreshment and I'm most grateful for that opportunity. Thanks to Craig and Phil for leading and sharing over the last two weeks. On the 20th of August, Noel Pearson and Tim Costello spoke about understanding the voice to Parliament and it's now available on YouTube. I have it on high recommendation that's well worth watching and I'll be doing that this week. Be informed on this important issue in the life of our nation. We sing together, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Alleluia.
The Old Testament reading is a summarised reading of Exodus chapter 1, verse 8 to chapter 2, verse 10. <clears throat> the new king in Egypt said to his people, The Israelites have become far too numerous for us. Come, we must deal shrewdly with them. So they put slave masters over them to oppress them with forced labour. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. So the Egyptians worked them ruthlessly. The king said to the Hebrew midwives, When you are helping the Hebrew women during childbirth, if you see that the baby boy is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, let her live. The midwives, however, fear God and let the boys live. Then the king summoned the midwives and asked, Why have you done this? Why have you let the boys live? The midwives answered, <clears throat> Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women. They are vigorous and give birth before the midwives arrive. So God was kind to the midwives, and the people increased and became even more numerous. Then Pharaoh gave this order to all his people. Every Hebrew boy that is born you must throw into the river Nile, but let every girl live. Now a Levite woman gave birth to a son. She hid him for three months, but when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slave to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. I love Romans 12, and a number of years ago, I learned it by heart. I'm a bit rusty now, but hopefully we'll remember it for now. The New Testament reading is Romans 12, verses 1 to 8. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is true worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith given to each of us. For just as each of us has one body with many members and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts. According to the grace given to each of us, if your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. And if it is showing mercy, do it cheerfully. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Action. I wonder what you think about when we say the word action. Action is doing something, typically to achieve an aim. One might think of action on a film set where there is this set way of doing things. First, the director calls 
quiet on set. I'd like that here with the planes sometimes. And then camera, to which the operator replies rolling. Sound, to which the recordist replies speed when they're recording. Market or slate, when someone reads what's on the slate and snaps the clapper. The clapper helps to synchronise the video and audio in post-production. Q, to ready any actors, or special effects. And then finally, action, which is when everything is ready and the scene starts to play out. Now we don't do all that here. We're fairly relaxed here at Church Online. We record this from a studio, which is a converted office, quite a small office in fact. We do start each take with a description and which take it is like message, take one or two, or intro, take three, if I've stumbled over a few words or a really loud plane has just gone over, or the candle won't light for some reason, or a technical issue. And we don't have a clapper. Perhaps, perhaps we should have a clapper. Our action here is worship, prayer, sharing about God, inspired by the scriptures, the Bible, to lead to an encounter with God, to move people, to move us, in heart, mind and soul, to draw near to Jesus and be transformed by the Spirit for discipleship and mission. That's our action right now, so to speak. We've heard a story of action in Exodus, of following God by doing the ordinary things that they were called to do, like the Hebrew midwives. They were healthcare professionals who by their name caused and helped birth. And by the several mentions in the Bible, they were probably routine in Israelite society at the time. In the Exodus story, there was a new king who didn't know the history of the presence of the Israelites, or that Joseph, an Israelite, a previous prime minister in effect, had saved Egypt from a severe famine. We find a story of oppression, serious oppression. There was slavery, brutality, forced labor, abuse, power, coercion, control. And then leading to the mandate, the order, to kill all the male babies born to Hebrew women. One wonders how this could be. And yet here in Australia, we remember the stolen generation. We can think of the Holocaust. In recent years, the genocides in Myanmar, Rwanda, northern Iraq, Syria, Darfur and Sudan. And the evasion of Ukraine and the killing of civilians. I don't think humankind has changed much. And we can certainly see that in slavery today. It is estimated there are up to 40 million slaves in the world today, with one in four being children. We've read an ancient story of oppression, slavery, brutality. It's a difficult story to read. The images of Egypt in Genesis were not ones of oppression, but now we have a different picture where Egypt is the protagonist. This is part of the story of how God becomes the God of Israel. Later in Exodus, God is the liberator, freeing the Israelites from the slavery and the abuse of Egypt. One could name this story subversive women and an insecure king. The king is so fearful of the Israelites and it leads to hating them, and all the Egyptians begin to loathe them. The Hebrew midwives, called Hebrew here to show their low status and oppressed people, but in the full reading they're actually given names. Status and honour goes with naming. They are Shipra and Pua, and they are subversive, disobedient to the king's orders by letting the babies live, civil disobedience. There's a bit of humour when the midwives reply to the king that the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptians. They are vigorous and give birth before we come, they say. It's an empowering picture. The sister of Moses, Miriam, shows courage by watching over her brother and approaching the Pharaoh's daughter. The mother of Moses shows courage in giving away her son twice, once in a basket in the river, 
And here we have the contrast. The king insisted that the baby boys be thrown into the river to die, whereas baby Jesus was placed in the river in a basket to live. And his mother gave him away a second time after weaning him so that Pharaoh's daughter could adopt him. These are stories of taking action that show faithfulness to God and courage in the face of oppression. So the Exodus passage gives us action, whereas the Romans 12 passage gives us the attitude to have in that action. I love Romans 12. It's one of my favourite chapters in the Bible. It challenges, encourages and inspires me in my everyday living. Romans 12 comes after a rather theological dense section. And it begins with, therefore, meaning, so, knowing all this. The preceding 11 chapters, Paul, the writer, explains the doctrine of justification by faith and the faithfulness and righteousness of God. And here we have the pivot point for the remaining five chapters, the practical implications of that doctrine in Christian life, God's call to worship, holiness and unity. In the Bible, the purpose of doctrine is always that it be practiced. God has provided salvation, therefore this is a reasonable response. In view of God's mercy, and Phil shared about mercy in last week's message, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. You know, we often think of sacrifice as a negative term, but here sacrifice is thanksgiving, drawing nearer to God. And in that thanksgiving, we put God first, not my will, but God's will, God's king kingdom come, God's will be done in my life today. Doing what is good and acceptable, complete before God. This is true worship, not something we simply do or go to. Worship is an attitude of life. Let it be our lives. Archbishop William Temple put it this way. Worship is the submission of all of our nature to God. Worship is our serving, our daily living, our daily giving of ourselves to God, offering our bodies as a living sacrifice. We hear from Paul to not be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we may discern what is the will of God. The women responsible for the survival of Moses, for his safety and his living, they did not conform to the Pharaoh's will. They discerned the will of God in a difficult situation. For us, the pattern of this world can be revenge and bitterness and control. A focus on ourselves, looking out for ourselves only. Get more, have more, accumulate more. Instead, we are to be transformed totally changed by the renewing of our minds. And there's a reminder from Paul to not think of ourselves too highly. How often do I need to be reminded of that? We come in humility with sober judgment. And then we have the well-known, well-used image of many parts of the body of Christ and its many gifts. There is one body with many members and we belong to each other. Together we form the body. And we do that with our different gifts and abilities, all working together. The midwives had a place in God's story by simply doing their regular activity as midwives. Moses' mother, by nursing, by caring for a child. Moses was later a leader, but couldn't get there without the others working together to raise up Moses, who was later called by God to be instrumental in the liberating of the Israelites from their slavery and abuse. Different gifts. And we see that in church online. You know, I greatly value the skills and gifts of James, our producer. And as we're recording this, he's doing the filming, recording the sound, changing the slides, looking after all that technical stuff. And later, he'll be doing post-production editing to put it all together to become another church online service that you're a part of right now. And I can't do what James is doing. And then there are all those that share their musical talent, playing and singing so that we can worship. I can't do that. There are those that share the readings, those that provide information about the various special days like Reconciliation Sunday, 
Refugee Week, Harmony Week, World Day of Prayer, and so many others. We use that information as part of our services. Together, we make up the body. Together, we are the action that God calls us to be. The Exodus story is ordinary people being faithful to God and doing extraordinary things. The story also shows us that God is on the side of people who are oppressed. It's such good news, such amazing news. And so we are called to act and to live out our faith. We are called to action, all called to call out injustice. I see the director calling action as Jesus, equipping us for God's call to action and to be faithful in that calling, in reaching our world with acceptance, hope and transformation in Jesus. Together and individually, acknowledging that we all have different parts to play. Together we live out our faith, not conforming to the world, at times even with acts of subversion, we're called. As God is in the liberating and justice business, so we are called to justice. We are called to liberate people from oppression, fear, discouragement, and the negative patterns of this world. Today, we've been provided with examples of what it means to take action and to live our faith in response to God's call. Can I encourage you to pray? What is one thing that you can do this week inspired by these passages? Pray that your gifts and skills would be used by God. And if you don't know what your gifts are, pray about that and contact us about ways to explore your gifts. Hear the sound of Jesus using that clapperboard and saying, action. Amen. Times I have failed Still your mercy remains Should I stumble again I'm caught in your grace I lost Your light will shine When all else fades Never end Your glory goes beyond all things My heart and my soul I give you control Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out. You will above all else in my purpose. The art of losing my soul and bringing you praise of the lost. Your light will shine when all else fades. Never ending, your glory goes beyond all My heart and my soul, I give you control. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and
we come together in prayer. Let's pray. Loving and living God, we thank you for this story in Exodus and the words of Paul in Romans that encourage, inspire and challenge us. Thank you that you transform and renew us. Thank you for your mercy. We are sorry for those times we make life all about us, when we conform to the pattern of this world for the things we think, say and do that are not of you. And thank you that through Jesus giving himself, even to death on the cross, that these things and all our sins are forgiven. We ask for your help to not conform to worldly patterns. Help us to be open to the Holy Spirit's transforming power and daily renewing of our minds to hear your call to action. And this week we pray that in our busy lives we would find time to draw near to you, to seek your presence and to grow in our faith. Loving God, we pray for our world, for those places where there is oppression and fear we pray for answers to the, the slavery issue that we have around the world, for the 40 million people being trafficked in slavery, the one in four children that are stuck in this. And we pray for a world that is free of slavery. We pray for our communities. We pray that there will be places where there isn't fear, we pray for our schools. We pray for children who are bullied and for those that are the bullies. And we pray that in the safety of our schools that they would be a safe place, that this would be the place where we learn to get along together. And Holy Spirit, we pray for people on our hearts today. There are people who are lonely and oppressed fearful about life, grieving, with health issues. And we lift them up to you and pray for your mercy and your grace and your healing. Lord, sometimes it's hard to believe that our small actions can make a difference in the world. And yet we know that through you they do. And so we offer our financial and practical gifts to you Help us to use them to bring hope in despair, compassion where there is distress. Bless these gifts and every gift that we offer with your love. Father God, we offer ourselves to you. Lord Jesus, we open our hearts and our minds to you. Holy Spirit, speak into our lives, transform and renew us, we pray. So we lift all of our prayers together in the name of Jesus, our Saviour and Redeemer. Amen.
Thank you for joining us today. We hope it's brought you hope. If you'd like prayer or pastoral care, please reach out to us by text or email. This week, live out your faith in response to God's call. Hear the call to action. And may the grace, the Lord Jesus Christ, the love and the presence of God, the friendship and unity of the Holy Spirit be with you today and but remain with you always as you seek to serve God and follow God in your life. Amen. Blessings on your week. encouragement then give encouragement oh, I did that wrong if it's to encourage and give encouragement I, I mean, I would have let that one through yeah <laughs> I've got so far yeah. <laughs>